Hey everybody, I'm Allie. I'm excited for today's creative organizing solution. I'm gonna be showcasing 19 different creative organizing solutions that we've implemented in our kitchen that help us have the most functionality in the space, make the most out of the available space that we have, and keep things tidy and organized. I have 19 different things to share. There's no particular order. I'm more following the flow of the kitchen. However, the last one that I have to share is the one that I am most proud of. It is a creative organizing solution that I came up with in order to solve a dilemma that we had about organizing our pots and pans. So I hope you'll stay through the end to check it out. But I've got 19 things to talk about, so let's get into it. So first off, we went with lower cabinets in our kitchen wherever possible. And the reason being is twofold. One, I feel that I am able to better utilize my drawer space rather than cabinet space, especially those far reaches in the back corners. I just feel like oftentimes they're forgotten or too hard to reach. And so you end up not really utilizing that space. But also we hope that this is our forever home and I just felt that drawers would give us better accessibility over cabinets. Next up, we have a few creative organizing solutions in our fridge. So if you caught my other videos on my creative organizing solutions for my vanity or for my bathroom, you know that I am a fan of corralling chaos using trays. And that appreciation does not end at the fridge. So I have these trays that I have on this bottom shelf that just help me get access to that the very back of our shelves by just being able to remove them. They are free standing and easy to pull out and add to and utilize as necessary. So those are super handy. And then next to that, I have this removable 18 egg drawer. And what I love about this is I'm able to put it out on the countertop, fill it with the eggs from the carton. And then I can return the item right here to the shelf. And there is a locking mechanism that allows it to sit at this kind of tilted angle so all the eggs roll forward if they're toward the back. So in that same vein, I've added these additional small drawers to this side of our fridge. And these are just a handy place to keep kind of the traditional staples, cream cheese, butter, and then a single serve different uh, snacks or guacamole. And then this is one of my favorite items in here. So I've seen a number of different soda can, aluminum can organizers, but what I always kind of didn't like about them is that when they were empty, they took up a lot of space that could otherwise be utilized for, my fridge is getting angry at me that the door is still open. They took up a lot of valuable storage space when they weren't being used. So these silicone, aluminum mats create a kind of groove for the soda cans to store in and then you can actually go up a couple of different layers two or three soda cans but they easily stack on top of each other and stay upright and then as you can see with this this is our defrosting tray when the space is not being utilized by soda by aluminum cans you can repurpose this space. So next up we have our mini vertical pantry. So this is a handy little uh, pull out pantry that we are able to house our flat bakeware like our cookie sheets and our pizza rounds. And it's in a perfect location, it's right next to the stove. And we were able to maximize this rather narrow sliver between the stove and our corner. So next up is our lower drawers right here. So these actually house our plates with these little pegboards that kind of keep all of the plates from shifting. And we just had extra pegs, so. I just have them in there. And then on the bottom here, we have this is our mason jar storage and different food container storage. But the key here is we were able to maximize the vertical space with these secondary hidden drawers. 
So these are adjustable dial organizers. I received this product to evaluate and test them out. And to be honest, I don't know why I waited so long to get organizers like this. Before I used this organizing system, I just had utter chaos. There was nothing of order. Keep keeping all the little different lids and containers kind of separated and orderly. And then up top we have a second scallop drawer. And this is where we keep just the random kitchen utensils and tools that you need. But I am really pleased with this kind of versatility and flexibility of these extendable, both width and depth um, organizers. They're sturdy, they're flexible, and then this knife organizer, which did come from Ikea, ended up working perfectly and I was able to incorporate it into the organizing. So I am really super pleased with this product. Uh, they're really sturdy. They have these little knobs right here that catch these teeth. So once you set the width, it's not a tension rod or anything that could potentially diminish over time, but I definitely like this design because it seems to be fail-proof or future-proof because it doesn't have pieces that can potentially wear out over time or fail over time. So these are adjustable, so you can basically make the widths of your sections as wide as your needs call for, which I definitely appreciate. So the narrowest you could go is just about the width of a mason jar lid. So next to those two drawers is our combination trash and recycling bin. This is not particularly brand new. I feel like a lot of people have seen this before. But something that we do for our recycling bin is use a reusable diaper pad. We use a reusable diaper we use a reusable diaper pail liner rather than using a single use trash bag. And the logic here is the items that we're putting into our recycle bin are generally clean. Whatever kind of schmutz is on the items that we're getting ready to recycle, we rinse that off before we put it in the bin. So the expectation is the things we're putting in here are not necessarily dirty or messy or can potentially stain anything. And so it's great to have a reusable liner as opposed to a single use that is just going to further clutter up our landfills. And when and if this does get a little gamey or a little um, dirty, we just take it off, throw it in the washer, clean it up, put it right back in. It's fantastic and it saves us both money and also it's better for the environment. So above that is our flatware drawer and this is a space, yet another opportunity where I was able to maximize the vertical space. This drawer is not particularly deep in any way, but flatware just doesn't take up that much space. So we actually have two levels of organization. The bottom level is our less used utensils and um, some just general knives. And then the top level is where we put all of our most utilized utensils. And this was definitely an upgrade that I was happy to have the opportunity to get. My husband at the time when we did this renovation, he worked for a general contractor. So we got the opportunity to do a few upgrades on this remodel that would have otherwise been out of our budget, but because we were able to get it at close to cost, it allowed us to select those upgrades. Next up is this area next to our fridge. So originally we had a double oven and a small sliver of countertop between the oven and the fridge in the original layout. We swapped that out for a mini pantry with pull out trays, again, to maximize as much of the space. And this, I feel, for us and our needs, this was a much better, seriously, this was a better use of the space than having the double oven. And we definitely make the most out of all these drawers and they're very handy. And then up top, we use these shelves for more storage. There's a lot of room in there and we still rarely take up all of the space, but it is really handy to have. Next to that, we have this recessed cabinet that houses more of our cookware that doesn't fit in the vertical mini pantry. 
And then below that, we have what we have designated as the coffee zone for my husband. So in the drawers below, we have coffee cups housed in the bottom drawer. It was the most logical place to keep them considering all of the coffee supplies for my husband are over here. This drawer is filled with all the different coffee bags, coffee scoops, different you know filters and descalers and all the different accessories you need. And then the top drawer here is just kind of a secondary junk drawer for chip clips and different accessories. But above that is definitely the star of the show. So this is our pull out coffee appliance garage. So the garage has this pull out tray that allows him to bring the coffee pot out, lift up the lid, add his grounds in it, add the water that he needs and brew his coffee. Initially, we had a Keurig in this setup, but the Keurig recently died on us. This was just a quick solution to make sure he has his coffee until we find the right replacement. The one caveat I will say is the diameter of the space does have its limitations and we have to be mindful when we are looking at different coffee machines to make sure they will fit in there. There's a number that I have found that will fit in there but I am mindful about the process to refill the water and to take care of all the different maintenance that is necessary, making sure that whatever we select is not going to create like unnecessary undue friction. But that is the first of our coffee zones. So I prefer cold brew coffee or I often do tea. So this is where I will brew those different beverages. I also have this rotating Lazy Susan kind of marble shelf and it's super handy. I'm able to store all the oils and the cooking utensils and the different like tools and bits and bobs. And I have my tea bags for either black tea or sleepy time tea. And I'm able to just brew this in this corner out of the way. When I'm ready to make my drink, I come over to this little organizing tray. And this is where I have all the different, all the different additions and potions and whatnot that I add to my coffee and some other options that are out there. So I actually have it in one of these dispensing containers to make it easy to do, but when I'm on the go, I will grab a couple of the packets if I need them while I'm out. I also have functional mushrooms. This is a product from Laird Hamilton. And, and finally, I have this. This is a dispenser from Ikea, and this is the collagen that I add to my cold brew coffee. And it all fits nicely on this little tray. And then finally this, if you're not familiar, I worked at a wastewater treatment plant for many years. And I learned that you are not supposed to put fats, oils, and greases down the drain of your sink because it has the potential to create blockages and clogs. And it's really bad for both your pipes and the pipes of your municipality. So our municipality offers this kind of storage container to then put bags where you can dump your fats, oils, and greases in, or you can use a can uh, or any kind of container that can uh, accept like hot liquids, hot whatever. But what's nice is once the bag is full, which it's pretty full as we speak, we will dump that in the trash and make sure it doesn't end up in our local sewer systems. And it fits nicely right there. And lastly, I have this. This is a milk frother that is rechargeable, but I actually use it to help me mix all of those different powders and potions with my coffee or with my tea. And this little handy storage container houses it in a way where when I'm done with it, the you know wet pieces are able to dry and kind of be stored vertically, but it still kind of looks nice with the every all the other aesthetics. Right below my brewing station, we've got these three rather narrow drawers that have more drawer organizing solutions in them. So this is a handy little um, dispenser for your uh, saran wrap and also your aluminum foil. What's nice is you can pull out the saran wrap, lay it right here, and if you're familiar with any kind of crafting tools, you basically just pull, well, it's gonna be hard to do with one hand, but, 
But you have this handy cutter to slice through and give you the exact size saran wrap or aluminum foil that you intend. You don't have to contend with the built-in cutters of the boxes and you just make better use. This was a rather narrow, small drawer anyway. So it was a good kind of way to utilize that space. Next up, we have this drawer. Again, they are very narrow, so I can't actually fit these individual sandwich packs together or side by side, but the drawer is deep, so I was able to get four of these sandwich packs in them, and they definitely kind of help me identify when I need to go grocery shopping for larger gallon size bags, and they just make it easier to access. And then this bottom drawer is just our overflow storage. Next to those three drawers, we have the under sink area. So we have one of those tip out trays where we, we are able to store our additional cleaning supplies and sponges in addition to the organizing in the sink. So if you did watch my vertical organization video, you saw these vertical silicone storage pockets. I have this one here for my long handled cleaning. This smaller one is where we store, this is a cleaning device for cast iron. So you can really scrub at the cast iron and get it clean. And then these are the cleaning items that are recommended for my stoneware products that most of them are from Pampered Chef. So this is how you scrape off the food residue from your stoneware. We have the handy, scrub daddy storage right there so it's able to air dry nice and then below the sink we have these two additions so we had the added trays over here and the added cutting board over here what i was able to do is find these flat cutting trays that are food grade and dishwasher safe and I was able to take this one cutting board storage unit and turn it into a place where I could actually store six additional cutting boards that are just easier to grab and use when I'm cutting up a tomato or chopping up some lettuce rather than always pulling out the wood tray. So underneath the sink, we don't have a lot of need for organization down here. We've got the Lazy Susan, which is always handy. Back there in the very back, we actually have leak sensor detectors. I mentioned that my husband came from the general construction industry, and one thing he saw a lot of was house leaks, so he has added these leak sensors throughout our house, and it just gives us some kind of comfort and peace of mind that if there is some kind of leak that happens under here, we'll be notified and we won't have a flood in the house. And then lastly in the corner there, that is our under sink filtration system. This is a company called Clearly Filtered and it is a three stage system that allows us to have filtered water from the faucet, which is definitely a priority for me. Having worked at a wastewater treatment plant, I am familiar with the constituents that are and are not filtered out of the water and especially being in Las Vegas, we recycle all of our water from Lake Mead. So I wanted to have a three stage filtering option. Moving on to the next area. So this is the area that I call the triangle of efficiency. So when I was organizing and kind of designing this kitchen, I was very mindful that I wanted to have next to the dishwasher or as close as I could get to the dishwasher, the different items that we use most often. So my triangle kind of goes from the utensils in the two-tiered utensil drawer to the dining plates that we use on the regular to the mason jars and on-the-go food containers that we use on the regular, including the lids for those jars. And then lastly, above the dishwasher is where we have our cups. So the thought process here, I have always had the responsibility in my home growing up, I had to empty the dishwasher. And in my homes growing up, sometimes my parents or my mom did not have this foresight. So the, the cabinet with the cups was a few feet away from the dishwasher. The plates were also in a other area. And I always just felt like it was so efficient for me to walk back and forth and back and forth from the dishwasher to those areas. So when I had the opportunity, I wanted to make sure that this space would be most effective 
And while I'm on the subject of the dishwasher, so I am a big fan of the tumblers of the to-go's. I know recently Stanley had a big deal, but I have always been a fan of this brand called Simple Modern. They make these nice tall cups that are fit into my cup holder and they come with accessories like handles. So I have quite a few and their lids take straws, but I'm not a fan of the plastic straws that I can't ensure that I'm getting them super clean and disinfected. I, although I do have some metal straws, I like these because these have this little spoon tip at the end so when I have my tea or my coffee, I can use it to stir and it is a rather little narrow straw. But for the most part, when I'm using my to-go tumblers, I prefer to use these glass straws. I like the feel better and I know that I'm able to disinfect them and I, because they're glass, I can see to make sure that, you know, there's no kind of food residue or anything in there that's maybe harboring any bacteria. But this does create a challenge in the dishwasher. Obviously you don't want this to fall through the utensil basket and possibly get broken. And so instead I found this handy little addition to the dishwasher. It's this little tr cup that fits right along the edge. It has like a kind of hook right there so it stays secure and it holds my glass straws, my metal straws, the various different kind of small and delicate items. It sits right there, it's safe. Knock on wood, we haven't had any broken straws since then and it definitely solves the problems when I would put the straws in to the regular, they would fall right through and I didn't want to clean them on their side because then it just allowed the water and the residue to sit on the glass and not flow through. So this little cup has been super handy. And then when I'm ready, I use this organizer. This came out of my garage, but it's a way for me to store my straws in a horizontal fashion because I don't want to have to reach up high to pull them out. And I can just kind of pop my hand in there. They're, they're kind of out of the way and they're where all of the drinks when I would reach for a straw, they're right there. So I love that creative organizing solution and I'm not allowed to kind of have everything in the on the go cup zone as I need it. Just above the dishwasher, two other small kind of organizing solutions. So yet another tray, uh, in many of my videos I have featured, I love trays to kind of keep all the miscellaneous floating around things corralled into one space. And then this is a kind of straining drying tray that I got from Ikea. And this is where I store all of my mason jar rings. These don't need to go into the dishwasher because I have purchased these silicone lids that go into the rings and they create a seal for my food so I don't have to worry about things leaking. They are food safe silicone and they fit right into the rings like the normal kind of lids would, these sure tight lids, but they are dishwasher safe, they don't rust and if they do get kind of suctioned down into the, the mason jar, depending on whatever I have in there, there's this little flap that I can use to peel them open. So I really like those. And so that allows me to avoid having to wash the rings in the dishwasher because they don't touch any of the food material. So I just use this little collector next to my tray to keep them all orderly while the silicone lids are in the dishwasher. And in front of that, if you're not familiar, this is a handy little cell phone organizer from Ikea. I just like the fact that it doesn't look like a cell phone holder, but it's really functional. It holds the phone at a few different angles, so you can have it both vertical and upright, or you can have it at uh, the horizontal or orientation, and it also fits my mini or my full-size iPad. And so it's just a little handy organizing solution that when we're not using it, it doesn't you know look so kind of like an office. So sticking with the maximizing the vertical space, I love this vertical spice organizer on the door, making the most use out of that space without taking up valuable shelf space. However, this vertical storage only gives me storage for 18 spice bottles, which was not sufficient for our needs. So I found this vertical spice storage on Amazon and it's super handy. It comes with the empty bottles that are square, so they all 
sit nicely. And it comes with the pre-printed labels as well as blank labels that you can customize. It comes with a pen. And if you want, you can have the inserts. However, we predominantly use measuring spoons. So these bottles actually don't have these in them because they just get in the way. And so it's enabled us to expand our storage from just 16 over here. We added another 21 bottles over here. This is as much as we need. In fact, I have a few bottles here that I'm not using, so I have them reversed. So it, it absolutely accommodates all of the different spices that we need. And before I get to the last item, get coming down here to our corner, I was on the fence about getting a Lazy Susan. I just felt like it was kind of a relic of the 70s. But there are these fun kind of organizing solutions there, these pie organizing containers. As of right now, normally what's in those is my quick brew system. When I forget to <laughs> brew on the countertop, I have a quick brew system that allows me to brew up a cup of cold brew coffee within about 15 minutes. This is a fantastic system. It's got the little cup there to prevent the liquid from getting everywhere, and it comes in a glass craft. So this is great in a pinch. That sits right in he in these storage containers, but this is just a great space whether you get, these containers came from big lots. Why am I screaming? Because it definitely enables us to make use of this space and house all of these, you know, our, our hard boiled egg maker, our chicken shredder, and our lettuce chopper. All these little kind of nicks and knacks and handheld devices that you have in the kitchen. It's a perfect place for us to store all of our items in here. And it fits our toaster and our tiny crock pots. And finally, the creative organizing solution I'm most proud of in our upper corner here is the hanging pots and pans from this rail. So I had some dilemmas when it came to organizing our pots and pans because one, I don't have any other upper cabinets to store them in, but also this opening is actually smaller than the dimension of a lot of our pans. So it created a challenge of how would we get the pans in and out if they weren't in a vertical orientation. So I worked with our general contractor. I found this rail. This is a pot rail that is supposed to be hung from the ceiling using chains and hooks but I worked with him to get it mounted to the shelf that came with this cabinet. What's awesome is that the hooks slide side to side, kind of like a shower curtain. And so I'm able to slide the hook out of the way and gain access to the hanging pots that are way in the corner here and kind of shove them out of the way when I'm not using them. And so this is handy and also because we can just hold the pans by the bottom and add them to the hooks right there. It is a super creative way and a functional way for us to store all of our saucepans and our pots. The lid storage is not, it's not the best, it's not the most ideal, it does, it's a little bit cluttered. That's not perfect, but for me and for our household, this is super functional. And then at the very top, we have our saucepans. But this is something that I've never seen before. Most of the times you see these rails on the outside of cabinets. Um, but I would suggest if you are in a pinch and you're trying to figure out how to store your pots and pans, this might inspire you to find a way to store those pots and pans in a cabinet using the sliding rail. All right, so that's a wrap. I hope you found value in the creative organizing solutions that I shared from my kitchen. If you did, please give me a like and a comment. It really helps me as a beginning small channel to increase my circulation through YouTube. Thank you so much for being here. I hope to see you in my next video and until then, have a good one.